Welcome to Piano Chording Level 1. This is also Unit 5 of Year 1. I hope you enjoy these lessons. There are 16 of them, they're free, and they're designed to teach you how to play piano chording even if you've never done it before. Welcome to Piano Video Lessons Year 1, Unit 5. Unit 5 is a standalone unit called Piano Chording Level 1. And in today's lesson, we're going to be learning chord inversions and voicings. This is video number 77 on YouTube. If you found me on YouTube, just click the info card here in the corner to come on over to pianovideolessons.com where you'll find all of the lessons as well as the music to go along with them. So in today's lesson, we're going to be learning chord inversions and voicings, and we're also going to be learning the piece of music early one morning to help us uh, use those inversions and voicings. So, uh, basically speaking, up to now, we've always been jumping around the piano to play our chords in what we call root position, because the name of the chord, or the root of the chord, is on the bottom of each, uh, each placement. And so we would play a C chord with C on the bottom. But essentially, to play a C chord, we just need the notes C, E, and G. And we can play those in any combination or, or position. So we could put the C on the top and still be playing a C chord, C, E, G. And we can leave the C in the middle and have C, E, G and still be playing a C chord. So this is called root position. This is called first inversion. It's like your chord is doing a little cartwheel, flipping itself over, and then this is called second inversion. And because there are only three notes, if we invert it again, we end up back in root position, just up an octave higher, eight notes higher. So if we were to play the C chord in root position, we could move ourselves to the G chord or the V chord without moving very far just by opening our hand like this. Because if we know the notes of the G chord, G, B, D, G, B, D, when we're here on the C chord position and we're looking to play a G, we have G and then we have B, D. So here, if we play the G chord in this inversion, this first inversion, we can easily move between the C chord and the G chord. And we can do the same thing with other chords. So if we're on the C chord and we want to go to the F chord, we can just move here to F, A, C for the F major triad. So anytime we're playing a piece of music, we can investigate whether the chords in the piece are moving to close, uh, other close chords or moving further away. So for this one, early one morning, it starts off with a G chord, and then we have C major, and we know that's C, E, G, so we could have C, E with G on the bottom. The next chord is a D major chord, and so here's a D right here, and we just have to reach down to F sharp and, and A to find the notes of D major, D, F sharp, A. Now, if you don't uh, instantly know what notes are in D major, then you should really be practicing all of the major chords. And we did a really nice lesson on that in lesson number one when we learned all the major chords. And we learned all the min minor chords in lesson three. It's important to know those as easily. This particular piece doesn't use any minor chords. So we're starting off with the G chord. Then we have the C chord, C, E, G. Then we have the D chord. So there's two ways we can do that. We could just come down here to D, A, and F sharp. Or from the C chord, we could just go up one and have the F sharp on the top, D and A. Just finding the closest way to move from a C major to a D major. And then we could go back to a G, C, D, G, D, G, D, G, G, C, D, G. So go ahead and try playing all of the chords for early one morning. You can hop them around this way we always have done, but let's try playing them in these close voicings. So here we go, early one morning, let's play the melody. And let's write a couple fingerings in here. I used a two on this F sharp, that would help me get all the way down to D. I started with a one, but I used one, two, four here. To, whoop, one, two, four, that would help me get all the way up to five on the C. Um, anytime you're playing a lead sheet, five, three, two, one. Anytime you're playing a lead sheet, you have to think about fingerings on your own. 
and maybe go through and write them in. This is very similar. One, 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 two, four, four, five, three, two, F sharp, G. And then we have an A. We can leave our hand in this uh, G pentascale position for this whole section. As long as your two is on D, you're good to go for this line. And then we have this big reach again, this arpeggio, and then a scale. So we have the one, three, five, uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I was naming the no notes of the chord instead of the fingers. One, two, three, five, and then coming down a scale pattern. Five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, with a crossover to F sharp, back to one. So that's one, two, three, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so that's a quick rundown on the melody, how to play the fingerings on that. And here is now uh, how we're going to add the left hand. I'm just going to start off with a solid G major, and I'll play another one in this new measure. Now to play my C chord, I'm just finding C, E with still G on the bottom, and I'm just going to move down one here to the D major. Now you notice that my hands are so close together that I had to get off of the D with my left hand in order to play it with the melody or I had to use my left hand to do it. So you may want to start this down a lower on the piano. And that also gives you the option from this C chord to, do, to go up to D. Back to G. To C to D, either way, back to G. Here we have D to G, D to G. Now actually D down here is easier, so D in first inversion works more nicely than D in second inversion because there's a lot more hopping here, so let's stick with this one. And then we have one, two, three, five. Here we have this G scale coming down, right hand playing F sharp, left hand playing C. And then we have left hand on D. Nice. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and you learned a lot, and I hope to see you in the next one, but I'd love to hear from you, so please leave me a note in the comment section on YouTube or send me an email at pianovideolessons at gmail.com. And if you really love these lessons, perhaps you'll consider becoming a patron. See you soon.